Hi, I'm Dave Liu with Guns.com, and today I'm doing a review on the Staccato pistols, specifically the C2, but generally this whole Staccato line. So Staccato pistols right now are super hot. You've probably seen some videos and a whole bunch of advertisements about them. And in general, the wide body 1911 is very, very popular. It's getting a resurgence almost. But uh, they are known for being a little bit more expensive than your average gun. So the big question is, are they worth it? Most other guns out there can do 90% of what this gun does. But are you the type of person who likes the finer things of life? Uh, are you willing to pay for more expensive alcohol or a, a really gourmet dinner? If you are, you might want to check out these 19, uh, wide body 1911s and specifically the Staccato because they are the gourmet dinner of uh, guns. The analogy I like to use is the car analogy, which is used very often. Uh, Glocks are like Hondas. If, if guns are cars, Glocks are like Hondas. They're reliable, dependable, they get you where you want to go, and they do everything pretty well. And if you just want to get to where you're going, they're fine. Wide body 1911s, double stack 1911s, they're like race cars, right? Race cars are, they do everything a regular car can do, but they just do it a little bit faster and they're a little bit more fun to use. So if you like race cars, if you like things that perform at the highest level, then these may be guns that you will you want to check out. Let's go back a little bit and talk about what exactly is a 2011, a wide body 1911. So the 1911 is an old design. It was adopted by the US military in the year 1911. So it's been around for a long time. And there's a reason why it's been around for such a long time, because today it's still popular. The ergonomics, the trigger, just the way shooters hold it, everyone always gravitates towards the 1911. So the biggest problem with 1911s though in the modern age is magazine capacity. Nowadays with these wonder nine millimeters, uh, you know, ammunition in the two digits is pretty much standard. And the 1911, even in nine millimeter, only held about nine or 10 rounds. So that's why in the 1990s, uh, gunsmiths, uh, competitors starting to get together and try to figure out how to increase the capacity for 1911s. One of the first companies to do this was STI, and they kind of patented the term 2011. So the 2011 is really only STI guns, but in general nowadays, everybody kind of uses that name interchangeably, generically. So 2011, wide body, 1911, double stack, 1911, high capacity, 1911, they all talk about the basically the same thing. A 1911 that holds a double stack magazine, so it increases the ammunition capacity almost to double the, the initial capacity of the eight rounds it had before. Nowadays, 15, 20 rounds are not uncommon, uncommon for double stack 1911s. Another departure from that 2011 did to the original design was they changed the full metal frame to a polymer grip. Not all the wide body 1911s use polymer grips, but the STI ones did. And um, I like the polymer uh, the grips, just like a lot of the, the, the new polymer guns, nine millimeter guns out there, polymer grips give a little bit of flex to the gun. They help absorb the recoil just a little bit and make the guns slightly softer shooting. Now these first generation uh, double stack 1911s, uh, they were very much custom guns. So if we go back to the car analogy, these were the built in the garage hot rods. Built to perform very high at really high levels, but they could be finicky. They required a lot of tinkering. And if you wanted ultimate reliability, they really weren't the guns for you. You know, you had to like play with them even after you got them from your custom gunsmith. A lot of times shooters would have to do their own little modifications to make them run reliably for, you know, thousands and thousands of rounds. And they were also uh, very expensive. The low end was 2000, but typically four, five, seven thousand dollar guns were was not uncommon for these uh, high-end race guns. So then in 2018, STI wanted to address this uh, reliability problem. So they came out with their Gen 2 magazines. After all those years, they did a lot of research and figured out like the magazines were really the problem. And these Gen 2 magazines kind of solved it all. Um, so after a few years after this Gen 2 came out, all the custom builders kind of understood how these Gen 2 magazines worked. They fixed up their geometries inside the guns so that now 2011s, if you buy a 2011, it's expected to run reliably right out of the box, no break-in periods or whatever. It should be running totally reliably. So then in uh, around 2020, STI started, decided to rebrand and capitalize on this new reliability. Um, they changed their name to Staccato. So FCI is the Staccato. And what they did was they start changed their, their marketing from purely competition guns to duty guns, because now these guns were so reliable that they 
had no problems handing them out to cops, law enforcement, and even the military, and they would run, and they ran perfectly straight out of the box. In addition, they also upped their manufacturing so that these didn't require hand-fitting individual gunsmiths to work on every single gun. They figured out how to mass produce these guns. So now you could get lots, big orders from law enforcement or military uh, contracts and they could be fulfilled with high performing guns that ran really reliably. So gone are the days that you have to wait, you know, months or even years in some cases of getting your own custom 2011. Uh, nowadays, uh, guns.com has the, all, all these guns available right now. Um, so uh, go, out, go and check them out. These Staccato 2011s, I don't believe there's another company that makes American built this reliable 2011 guns for this pr price point. So when I heard about Staccato's new line, I knew I had to uh, check it out. So over the last few years since the Staccato's come out, I've been listening, I've been reading reports, I've been talking to people, and when I got my hands on this one to test, I tested it out thoroughly to make sure that it, it, it performed like I wanted it to. And let me tell you, um, I bought it. So yes, it definitely performed exactly like I want it, and now it's my daily carry main competition gun. Yeah, it's uh, that good. Again, reliability was the first thing I wanted to take a look at, and it ran absolutely flawlessly. Um, feeding was immaculate. Ejection was consistent patterns far out uh, to, to my side in a consistent manner with almost all the ammo I tried. And I tried self-defense ammo, range ammo, even uh, reloads. The industry tests have taken these guns out to 20, 30,000 rounds with no malfunctions. Uh, and they've been around for a number of years now. So reports have, are in, and I think we can fairly say that the Staccato guns are reliable. 1911s have always been known for accuracy. So when I went out and tested this for accuracy, I found this was consistent, didn't have any surprises at all. It's actually one of the most accurate guns, pistols I own. So the next thing we want to talk about uh, is the uh, ergonomics, your human body interaction with the gun. This grip is wider than the standard 1911 because it's a double stack magazine. So the grip is large. I have medium large hands and it is a thick grip. Now, is that a bad thing? Most people think that a thinner, smaller grip is a good thing. And ideally, if you are shooting with one hand, a, good, a grip in one hand, a smaller grip in one hand, is good. You want a smaller grip, kind of like, I don't know, if you're holding a, a sword or a knife. You, you don't want a giant knife with a giant uh, grip. You can't really hold on to it. You want a grip small enough that you can wrap your hands around so that you can control it. But modern days, we don't shoot guns with one hand. We use two. And if a grip is too small, especially initially when I grab a gun and I find the grip is, I, th I think the grip is initially too small. Sometimes it's so small that I can't get my second hand on it. This grip is large enough that I get a good control with a single hand so I can still shoot it one hand only and have no problems with it but it gives me enough real estate to put a second hand on it and that second hand can do a big job of controlling the gun I mean that's really the secret of shooting well with two hands is the support hand it's not your primary hand your primary hand is for pulling the trigger your support hand is really what controls the gun and you need to have enough real estate so that your support hand can really get in there get a lot of meat contact with that grip so it can really control the gun so you have faster follow-up shots and you can really control that uh, control that round now next is the uh, texture grip texture in my opinion perfect uh i have ha not had my hand slip once on this gun once I get a grip, I kept shooting it, and I don't need to readjust the grip. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but with some guns with a slightly more slippery grip texture, you grab on the gun, you shoot it, and then after a couple shots, you have to readjust your hands because your hand slipped a little bit. I haven't had to do this with this gun. So I say that grip texture is perfect. Uh, in addition, when I carry it concealed, no irritation though. So it's not so aggressive that it's rubbed against your skin when you're carrying around. I've carried around all day, long drives, gone to the movies, everything, and uh, no, didn't even notice the grip texture at all. The next texture that's important are the slide serrations. And I love these slide serrations. Both the, the front slide serrations and the rear slide serrations, your hand grips them perfectly and it's really super easy to manipulate them. All right, so let's start talking about the controls of the gun. First major control is your safety. This gun has a manual safety. Now, if you're not used to guns with a manual safety, this is something to consider. You need to train with a, manu a gun with a manual safety. It's not intuitive, you have to physically turn it on just switch it on and click it off. Um, so it's, it's for, for new users, they're not used to that, so they will forget to turn off their, uh, their manual safety and they'll try to pull the trigger and nothing happens. So this is a training issue. 
but I personally really like manual safeties. I have put in the time, I put in the reps, so that it's really second nature to me. But the additional benefit is, I think, fantastic. Especially for me, I carry appendix style. And an additional safety when you're carrying appendix is, is you know, really, really great in, in my opinion. So the next safety on the 19, 1911, 2011 design is the grip safety. It's the safety here right here in the back. And what it requires you is to have a full firing grip on the gun before the trigger can be Pulled. I like the safety. I think it's great. It has worked every single time for me. The activation of this grip safety really requires only a little bit of pressure. And there's a nice memory groove little bump here on the back, which really allows you to engage that safety early. So I've never had a problem even one hand shooting, weak hand shooting, and no other shooters, uh, smaller shooters, female shooters, have. I've never seen had a problem with the staccato line. So I think they've really ironed out their grip safeties and their manufacturing process where it's, it's, uh, it's been always super reliable. So next is the uh, magazine release. Now this has a button style magazine release like most guns do and it is reversible. If I had any criticism on this gun, it would be the fact that the magazine release and the slide stop release are a little bit difficult to get for me. I actually have to rotate my hand a little bit because the grip is a little bit bigger. I have to rotate my hand a little bit to engage the uh, magazine release and the slide stop. Now, is that a problem? Well, maybe a little bit. Um, there are aftermarket solutions for this. You can get extended magazine releases. You can get different grips that are a little bit shaved down a little bit. You can get slide stop uh, extended levers so that you can reach them with uh, people with shorter thumbs. But, um, but in general, for me, it's also another training issue. Uh, I just practice reloads with this stock gun. I rotate the, the gun a little bit to eject the magazines. And uh, for the uh, slide release, uh, I use my off hand. So when I insert a magazine, I just ride that movement straight up, hit the uh, slide slop release, or reach over the gun and manually pull the slide with the front cocking serrations. So it's really been no problem at all, and it's really more of a training issue than anything else. So now let's talk about the best part, the trigger. Now, trigger, 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 trigger are what 1911, 2011s are known for. And this one has a fantastic one. All the staccatos have a Series 70 style of trigger and all those those triggers are known to be the best competition triggers out there for any guns the series 70 competition triggers they're always the best now the staccatos they're no they're duty guns though certain they're not totally billed as competition guns so their triggers are are set depending on what type of gun you have and you know its intended uses this one the c2 is a more of a carry gun so it has a four pound trigger and which is really good for a carry gun. But poundage is not the only important thing when you're talking about triggers. It's the trigger feel. And that's where these designs shine. The 1911, the mechanism, the way the trigger is pulled straight back as opposed to hinged, like almost all the other polymer pistols nowadays, they all have that hinge at the top, which is where the trigger goes. This one is different. This trigger is you know, actuated with a straight pull back. And that's part of the reason why it has such a great feel. In addition, all the linkages make for a fantastic pull. Every single staccato I've tried all have very consistent triggers. Uh, there's a little bit of a take up, then you hit a wall, a tiny bit of creep, right? Then you hit that break. The definition of a glass rod breaking break and almost no over travel. And then when you release it, it's a very small movement and it resets. So it's a very smooth, fast shooting trigger. So I mean, in my opinion, it's the best duty trigger out there. So the standard uh, staccatos come with Dawson sights. Uh, Dawson is a company that, that Staccato partnered with. They've had a long relationship with them since the STI days. And Dawson's are known for making fantastic competition sights, but also duty and carry sights. Uh, the iron sights, when I was using them, worked fantastic. Uh, they have a fiber optic front blade which is with a narrow front blade, which I really like. I like a narrow front sight so that there's a lot of light when you look through your rear iron sight so you can really get a precise long distance uh, picture. The, the rear sights are usually blacked out with some serrations. So a black rear sight and a fiber optic bright front sight. That's my ideal uh, uh, iron sight setup. It's good for almost all lighting conditions except pitch black, but 
You probably shouldn't be shooting when you can't see anything. And um, it's really fast and easy to acquire. And at distance, you can take long shots very, very accurately. But of course, I like red dots. Uh, I shoot red dots on one of my pistols. So um, I got the one with a uh, optic cut. So all the Scottos have a DPO, Dawson Precision Optic cut on them. Now these cuts allow it so that uh, Delta Point Pros, those sites, uh, those red dots can fit directly onto the slide. That's the whole pattern is, is for that. And all the different uh, red dots that use that same whole pattern. Now, if you have a different red dot you wanna use, say a Trijicon or a Hollow Sun, then you'll need an adapter plate, but they make uh, plenty of adapter plates. A number of different companies make adapter plates for this uh, optics cut. So you have your plates to choose from. In general, this plate system is, is pretty good. Um, it's not too thick. So it's still, even with a plate, mounts the dot low enough. And it has a number of redundant um, mechanisms in which it really like cams in and locks that plate into place so that even under recoil, that plate's not gonna go anywhere. A couple more considerations. One is warranty. Staccato is well known for their warranty. Uh, any problems with the gun, you send it to Staccato and usually pretty quickly they'll have a gun repaired and sent back to you. So that's always a good thing. Next is uh, the aftermarket. Uh, you should always be aware when you're purchasing a new gun, what is the aftermarket like? Are there accessories? Can you get holsters for them? Well, because of the popularity of the Staccato guns, uh, there's a rich aftermarket. Pretty much anything you want to do to the gun, any customizations you want to make, be it a trigger job, different grip, uh, compensators, uh, extended safeties, extended slide stops, optics, uh, and even holsters, there's plenty of manufacturers that are there to uh, really cover all the needs. I also even found that um, a lot of my 1911 holsters, night holsters designed for 1911s with accessory rails uh, seem to work with this gun. For me, I kind of feel like, going back to the car analogy, a 69 Mustang, like it's just got great lines. It's industrial, it's not too sleek, not too space age. It has that kind of working man, but really you know it's gonna go fast kind of look. For me, it's the perfect gun. And again, to go back to the question of is it worth it? Well, uh, how much is the perfect gun worth to you? Uh, for me, uh, I say it's the Cicado C2. Uh, go check them out on guns.com.